Are you ready for it? Never. I'm never ready for this. Are you ready to see what's in my box? Because I sure am. I got my box sent to me by Shannon over at The Daily DIYer and I cannot wait to see what is in here. If you are brand new to this, this entire thing is organized by Courtney over in Creative on the Cheap. She gathers a few of us together, swaps names so that we each send someone else a box and then we get to craft with what is in here as well as pull some of the items out of our own stash. But there are two challenge items in here that I must craft with. And then she also puts in a twist, and this time the twist includes using no glue adhesives. Oh, that is never my favorite, but I love a good challenge. Now, I sent my box over to Jay at J Money DIY. I love her. She is super cute. The first time I met her, the first thing in my mouth was, I did not realize you were this short, which is ironic because the rest of the entire group said the same thing to me. So Jay and I can bond over the fact that neither one of us are very tall. So you are definitely going to want to make sure that you check out Jay's video and all you need to do is go to the description box. There's going to be a playlist that you can click on and it's going to take you through everyone's videos, including Jay's, and you are going to get a ton of inspiration and have a lot of fun. So grab your snack, grab your drink, and let's get going. Okay, let's see what Shannon sent me. If y'all don't know, Shannon is one of my favorite people. She is so creative. Look how well packaged this is. Oh my goodness. If you don't know it, Shannon is definitely one of my favorite people. I just adore her. I love her creativity, but the thing I love about her most is her sweet heart. She is one of the kindest people I know. I am super excited to dive into this box. Challenge item number one. Okay, is that just not fun? I don't even know if I care so much about what's inside and if it's really hard, I may not care because look at that. Oh, that's mesmerizing. Okay, we're gonna put that down. I think this is challenge item number two. Yes, it is. Oh, you guys. The wrapping alone. I need these in my life. <gasps> oh, it's like a little prism of rainbows. Starting off with a card. So sweet. My friend, you brighten my world and I am grateful for all the good, she put a hard around good things that you bring to my life. I'm not kidding when I say she is one of the sweetest people. Jennifer, you have the kindest heart and bring so much joy to my life. I know your projects will also bring a lot of joy to your followers too. Happy crafting, Shannon. She really is one of the sweetest people. Y'all, she bagged it all. Look at this. Everything is in here. Christmas, it is like Christmas. I lay this on my lap. Come a little closer. You want to peek inside? Starting off with, we have some string here. You guys, we know we can use string just about everywhere. White, tan, gray, and black. Next up, we have these little burlap flowers. Those are really cute. I like those. I'm sensing a theme. Here we have a little burlap stretched canvas. I have not seen this at mine. That is really fun. Okay, I'm excited. She was nice to me. Okay, here we have, this is so cute, home spelled out on little homes. That is a darling. I love that. I think I have an idea for this already too. That'll be fun. Oh, look at this. Bloom where you are planted. I love that saying. I've done things with that saying before, but I love the shape of this sign. That is super cute. Oh, that is so cute. Here we have a little roll of burlap. I love this cream color. That is so pretty. Oh, I am so excited. I have so many ideas right now. Okay, a little pack of farmhouse signs, farm fresh with the rooster, pig, and cow. I just saw these at my Dollar Tree and um, my first thought was how easy would it be to just slap a magnet on the back and you have cute little magnets for your fridge. I will try to come up with something different than that. I'll try to be more original, but don't be surprised if that happens to be one of the ways that I use them, but we will see. Okay, so here we have this cute little beaded decor with little corrugated metal house. Again, just super cute. Dollar Tree's doing a lot more of these little beaded decor pieces and I think they are so much fun. 
She also sent me a little string of beads, and if you are around, you know I'm a bead lover and I use beads all of the time, so these are definitely something that I can utilize. Look at that. I love that Dollar Tree carries these. Alrighty, challenge number one. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I wanna reuse this at some point because you are so pretty. Are you ready for it? Never, I'm never ready for this. I feel wood, I feel, oh, that's so cute. That is so cute. It's a little picket sign, it says love, and you have these little hooks on it. That is cute. Okay. Hmm. I'll come up with something. It's really cute the way it is though. Challenge item number two. In my opinion, challenge item number two is always the one that scares me. Are we ready? We'll see it together. I can feel like a top half. Okay, it's a water bottle. Okay. Let's get crafting. I couldn't resist. I started off with this string of beads. Now, if you want to recreate this, you also need to grab one of these little wood rounds. You can get this at the crafter section at Dollar Tree and then take some wood filler. I'm using some dry decks to just fill the hole. While that is drying, go ahead and grab some hot glue and that string of beads, and you're just going to start placing those beads along that outside edge. The thing about doing this while the beads are still on the string is that it makes this so much faster and easier. Once you get to the end, then you can clip the string, get rid of the beads you're not using, and if you want to, then pull the string out at that time. Now for the base of this, I just grabbed this wooden candlestick. It's from Hobby Lobby, just under $2. Just pull that little metal piece out because you will not need it. And then just hot glue this right into the center of your little round piece. To give this piece more texture and dimension, I started off with a dark brown base coat. This is Truffle by Waverly. Once it dried, I then went in with a white paint on top of that, let it dry, and then sanded it back so that I could see some of that darker brown color underneath. And I think that this turned out so beautiful. Here I have a candle sitting on it, but of course you can use this pedestal any way that you want. Time to tackle this first challenge item. It is so adorable, but I couldn't leave it this way. So I went ahead and removed the hooks as well as the decorative heart on top. I really wanted a ton of texture for this piece. So I'm mixing some salt wash with the paint. On average, it's about a 50-50 ratio, but you can add more of one or the other until you get the consistency that you need. Salt wash is a great additive to not only really give great texture, but it will adhere to so many different surfaces, even really slick surfaces. This is similar to doing like the baking soda thing, but like a thousand times better. So I personally like to go ahead and just like brush it on to get a coat. And then when I want that texture, I go back and I stemple the brush and that will give me those like peaks that I'm looking for. Now for this project, you also want to grab three of these wood pieces from the crafter square and you are going to be gluing them together, creating three sides of a box. Now I'm just using traditional hot glue to do this, but you can also use wood glue if you want to. I was just going for the quick, easy, fast, get it done approach. To paint it, I'm using that same mixture of paint and salt wash to get that texture on this. Again, I like to brush it on and then stipple it in order to get that really good texture. Once everything has dried, you can glue that picket onto the front, finishing off your box. At this point, the texture's not really thriving yet. And so to get it to pop, take a lighter paint here. I'm using some white from Waverly and just dry brushing it on and it really helps that texture come through. I really love the way that this box looks. It really has such a gardeny feel to it and adding those terracotta pots inside of it, I think is the perfect finishing touch. I'm so excited about this next project using these little round circles. Here I created a printout of butterflies. I think this has a very anthropology look to it, but there are only three rounds. So I'm gonna pick three of the butterflies, 
From there, you would just wanna cut them out loosely. Now, I'm gonna leave a link so that you can also have this printable for free. To apply them on the rounds, just use a thin coat of Mod Podge, lay your paper butterfly on top of it, and then just smooth it out, making sure that you have no wrinkles. Once this is completely set up, you can just use some sandpaper to sand off the extra paper. I find that this is the way to get the cleanest edge and then you can place some more Mod Podge on top. Now I'm choosing to go in with the dishwasher safe Mod Podge and that's because if these are used as like coasters, I wanna protect them. But if you also wanna slap a magnet on the back of it and put on your fridge, anything in your kitchen can get, you know, what we call kitchen fuzz and you would still be able to wipe these off. Look how beautiful these are. I think they are stunning and definitely have that anthropology vibe to them. It is time for me to go in with my first burlap piece and I'm using the stretch burlap frame. I'm removing the burlap because I'm only actually gonna be using part of the frame. Man, do they go in with the staples on this one. For this project, you also want a thin piece of wood and this shelf was the perfect thickness, but a little too long, so I trimmed it down. Now I went ahead and I took all the staples out of this because I actually only want the two longer pieces. Once you have the two longer pieces separated, then you can glue them to the top and the bottom of that solid wood piece. If you have any rough pieces, you definitely wanna take the time to go ahead and sand them and smooth them out. Once you've done that, then you can paint this whatever color pleases your heart. So I created a four by six coordinating print to go along with those coasters. Simply to apply this, again, you're gonna be using Mod Podge. I actually like to cover the entire surface and then I lay it down. Now I did a rookie mistake here. Instead of waiting for this to dry, I went over it with Mod Podge that will create wrinkling. So if you don't want wrinkling, do the layer on bottom, let it dry before you add a layer on top. I still think this turned out super cute. Now I like the four by six, but if you just wanna pop this in the frame, I'm also gonna leave the link to an eight by 10 that you can just stick right into a frame. I love this lighter color burlap. I think it is so pretty. I think it would actually look really good covering like a seat of a chair. Now to get out the wrinkles, I just mist it with some water and I'm just taking my heat press over it. I have a template here because I'm gonna be creating a little triangle banners. Now you can go ahead and trace it out and then cut it. Or if you're a little bit more daring and lazy like I am, you can just lay your pattern down and then just carefully go around the edges with your rotary blade. If you don't have a rotary blade, then of course you can also use scissors to cut out your triangles. Well, we're gonna put all this together using the string that Shannon sent me. I placed it on a needle and I am threading that needle through the front side, go around the back and then back up on the opposite side. That way the string runs around the back of each banner. Now we can bring in these burlap flowers to decorate the banner. I just took some hot glue and placed one right in the center, skipped a couple of the banners on each side and added the other two. To decorate the rest of the banners, I chose to go in with this butterfly stencil from Dollar Tree. It has different butterflies all the way around it. I just picked a couple of them and alternated it down each side of the banner so that they each side would mirror the other side. And I think that this turned out so cute. Just a perfect little banner for spring, for summer. It's just, springy without being bright and bold, very neutral farmhouse. I love it. This is one of my favorite signs I have seen at Dollar Tree recently. I think it is so cute. I went ahead and I grabbed this little pack of wood pieces. You can get this at Walmart, Hobby Lobby. I chose the four larger ones out and I'm just hot gluing them to the bottom of this sign so that I can create like a little riser. You could be done at this point, or if you wanna do a little bit more, you can paint it. I'm starting with a base coat of a deep dark brown. This is Truffle by Waverly. Once I get it completely coated and it's dried, I then went in with some white paint, covered just the top. I'm leaving that the feet, that same yummy chocolate color. Once that white set up, I went in and sanded the edges to bring back some of that chocolatey color. And I love the way that this turned out. Risers are one of my absolute favorite ways to style decor because it just helps pull everything together. For this project, we're gonna be combining these three items to create the cutest little sign. 
You're gonna start by taking each of your letters and placing them where you want to on the board and then stenciling. I'm using black, this is ink by Waverly. Make sure that you get off any excess paint so that you don't have any bleed through and you will end up with nice crisp letters. I'm using the Little Metal House as placement because that will be my O in just a little bit as I finish up with my M and my E. Now to help that little corrugated house pop, I decided to go ahead and paint it. This is Waverly's Moss mixed with a little salt wash to, so that it will stick. And for the O, I'm using one of the poster board letters. If you were to stencil, it would not be as crisp. And so this really helps you have that crisp O to match up with the other letters. Once you have that all done, just glue it and pop it right where that O goes. Now to bring that green in a little bit more, I have this stencil from Dollar Tree as well. I'm just taking those leaves and stenciling them in at the bottom. And that really helps bring the whole thing together and you will have yourself just the cutest little sign. I absolutely love this and it's so fast and easy to do. The time is here. I need to finally tackle this water bottle. I had to remove that silicone band because I was not gonna need it, but then I needed to cut the top off. So I'm using my bandsaw to do that, but you could also use a handsaw to do this as well. After that, I wanted to paint this and give it some texture. So I'm using the combination of paint mixed with that salt wash. That salt wash will really make sure that paint sticks to this plastic water bottle. I also am stempling it so I can get a lot of really thick and good texture. I'm not done yet. Once it's dried, I go in with some white paint on top of this. I cover it completely and then I grab a jar ring, like just a regular mouth jar, not a wide jar. And I do the same thing. I first paint over it with the green paint with that salt wash. Once it's dried, I go over it with some white paint. Before the white paint has time to completely set up, I take a damp rag and wipe back some of that white paint on both the lid as well as the jar to get that green to come through. Now, if you wait too long, you can also use sandpaper to do the same thing so you can get some of that green. And for a final detail, take some twine. Now I'm choosing not to glue this on because of the twist, but of course you could always glue it. I'm just holding a piece longer and stretching it up to the top. I'm wrapping the twine all the way around. And once I've completely covered that center to secure that twine, I just tie a little knot and then cut off any long ends. From there, you can just pop your lid right on top. It'll have a nice tight fit so it won't go anywhere, but this isn't complete. We need to head out to the garden, pick some fresh, beautiful flowers to place in this, and then we have ourselves a beautiful vase. Now, of course, I used a plastic jar to do this. You don't have to go through all that. You could use a regular jar and do the exact same technique, and you will have yourself a beautiful vase for all of your spring flowers. I always have so much fun when I get to do these. If you enjoyed yourself, don't forget, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget that the playlist is in the description box so that you can follow along with all of us that participated this time. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.